Yeah. It was like cathartic. And then I could have a great day. Yeah. So you could just sit there, listen to Green Day, that. No anger. <laughs> no, not. And then just go, ha, ah, I've got all that out anyway. <laughs> now we can start the day. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. When the camera's on, it's all a big bit of fun. On the big red shutter. So, hello, and welcome back to the Red Shutter Club. I am here today with David Neville King. You know what, Ice? I'm all right. How about you, lads? Yeah, I'm loving it, isn't it? Yeah. We've got Viking beams and everything from 1820. <laughs> it's just Scouts, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Scouts, Vikings everywhere out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm talking for cover coming down the road. <laughs> oh, how are we? <laughs> I'm, I am dandy, man. How about yourself? Oh, you know, I'm all right, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm going out straight from here. Mm-hmm. So um, it was nice to uh, have a little go one of your guitars before. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I thought if I bring my guitar in and then I'm going out for the meal after mm-hmm. this and then you'll have a few drinks mm-hmm. and then carrying a the guitar on your back when it's there's loads fun. of hen do's and stag do's, yeah. it can go wrong, can't it? It can go so you've very wrong. you got to protect your instruments. You do. You so, do. Uh, um, this usually becomes the storage hub. If people are like out and have gigs, and then we're going out afterwards, it's ah, can I stash my guitar oh, yeah, in yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we met through April Moon, yeah, I think. April Mo- Moon introduced us. Yes, at the arts bar, yes. didn't she? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You, you, um, you were doing one of your gigs, where yeah, you were mm-hmm. doing like a, an album launch. It was, it was my first ever launch gig. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I, yeah, I turned up on my own to mm-hmm. that, and I thought, oh, go on, go and have a little look at this. Mm-hmm. And April Moon was standing there, like, and uh, they both come over. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, oh, do you want me to introduce you to yeah. Shannon? And mm-hmm. I said, yeah, go ahead, yeah, I'll introduce. So it was, just, it was nice. It was yeah. a nice night, that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was, it was. And I was terrified. And there was a proper party atmosphere but... in there. And but because I'm on my own, I have a tendency to chat. But then when you're over chat, people sort of look at you and go, I don't who are you? I don't even know. I don't even know who you are. You've just come over out of the shadows, mm-hmm. and now you're chatting to me about politics. Yeah. Like, what's going on here? But sometimes you do have to get out there on your own mm-hmm. and just mix it in with the music scene, and just yeah. you know. So yeah, either way, I can. I don't mind a good musical night. Yeah, alone or you know with people. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. Um, well, I've heard you play. I've heard your stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, you'll get to hear that shortly. Um, but just tell us a bit about yourself. Tell us a bit about what you do. Um, so, by trade, I'm a plumber. But I'm not not the best plumber. <laughs> but, you know, but like... You me, know, the lever on my toilet has been broken for ages. Uh, I'm not a plumber. I'm an uh, electrician. <laughs> no, no. But, like, I haven't plumbed for a while. Uh, because... I did, like, I lost a few family members, and through that, I sort of, I stopped working. Mm-hmm. And a, a little bit of inheritance come my way through that, which allowed me to concentrate on music and mm-hmm. record and stuff like yeah. that. Um, and I could still pay the bills on the house. Yeah. So I opted to sort of concentrate more on produc- producing my own stuff and, yeah. you know, writing more material. Because I've got about 250 songs. So they're sitting there. And like the best songs I ever wrote when I was 15. But mm-hmm. they're sitting there in a the stack. And um, I just thought, well, it's now or never, you know, through through the tragedy of losing people came this little bit of money where I could say, oh, hold on a minute, mm-hmm. my back's hurting. I'm sick of being under people's toilets. I, it just wasn't my game. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I pick up a guitar, that's where I feel free and I feel... It gives you sort of like a happiness, doesn't it? It does. Um, and yeah, so at the moment, I'm still on that mm-hmm. trajectory of, of doing my music because, you know, I've been playing since I was six years of age. Mm-hmm. The guitar, probably a better guitar play when I was 10 than what I am now because I was playing Spanish and classical. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's been a bit of a, a thing where like, It's like just, music is a part of you. Yeah. 
and it's it's a happy place. And like, if you're feeling down, you pick up a guitar. If you're feeling happy, you pick up a guitar. Mm-hmm. And then that's in a world full of like restrictions and fakeness. Mm-hmm. When you pick up a guitar or any instrument, do you feel like it's a freedom? It is. It's yeah. a freedom straight away. It's an escapism. It's well. an escapism. Yeah. But that that freedom you get when you pick up a guitar, like I know I'm waffling there, you haven't had the chance to put a bloody question out yet. <laughs> but you're like, me, me dad, when he when he bought me a guitar, um, this is when he bought me me a lucky guitar, and he went, you know what, mate? He went, this will be the best friend you'll ever have. And I looked at him, I thought, friend, you know what are you on about? And he was right. As soon as he gave me that guitar, he went, that's the best friend you'll ever have. And I always think about him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I always think about him whenever I pick up a guitar now. Mm-hmm. Because that's your happy place. That's your that's your fl- place of freedom to yeah. create. You know what I mean? And that mm-hmm. place of creation. Pff, there's no mm-hmm. better place to be, is there? There isn't. There and, really and it's isn't. magic. It is. It's magic, it is. isn't it? It's, it's magic. Like, I've heard a lot of people say it's like tapping into something otherworldly. You know? It is. Oh, it's yeah. just, it's not... It's it's something that we can achieve that's almost not human. Definitely. That sounds oh, definitely. like I'm really stoned right now. I promise I'm not. <laughs> no, but yeah, it is a place to tap into. And it's a funny thing because I've never studied music. I don't know how to read music. Mm-hmm. I haven't gone to college for music. But it's been part of my life from a very young age yeah. because that was my that was my escapism. So I'd be in my room and I'd pick up a guitar. Mm-hmm. Well, even now today, people go on, on TikTok and YouTube and they're on the phone straight away, these kids. Mm. And I, when I was a kid, there wasn't that. You know, you had an Atari 2600 and a guitar. Do you know what I mean? No, I, I, I definitely agree. I was actually just chatting because I accidentally came into possession of this Yamaha organ. And I was sat down and I was I was playing it and there was an organ in my house growing up and I just realised... That's what I used to do all day. I wasn't on my phone. I wasn't talking to people. I wasn't like, I wasn't worrying about social media. I wasn't looking no. at, I was just sitting here trying desperately to play House of the Rising Sun and failing. But it's, it, it's, it is, it's a different world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it, learning instruments and stuff like that, when you're learning an instrument or you're learning a new song, because you're always learning, aren't you? With all them notes, you're always learning something new every day. Mm-hmm. And then you listen to something, go, oh, I'll have a little go with that. Yeah. Or I'll learn that. And it's just like, you can never stop learning. There's no like end to it. There's no wall where you can't go past yeah. that wall. So your adventure continues till hopefully, till I'm 90 and my fingers have got arthritis and I'm sitting there and I'll play it with my tongue or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll play the instrument with my tongue and my toes or whatever works because... It's just like this endless amount of creation yeah. from this instrument, whatever instrument mm-hmm. it is. And it's the same with writing a song. It's like, how many words, how many formulas, how many stories, how many emotions can you fit into yeah. into one hobby? And it's wild because there's only 12 notes. There's only 12 how notes. How does all that come out of 12 notes? How many notes? formulas can you get out of mm-hmm. it? Like I tell you, 80% of my, my songs are within three chords, four mm-hmm. chords. Yeah. And two of them are the same three chords all the way through the through the yeah. fucking song. Well, it? that's uh, what I what it, what it, I think it was Luke Combs said. Uh, it's just three chords in the truth. <laughs> it is, though, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is. It's it's mad, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And like you know, sometimes you can come across musicians, and there's, there's two different types. I think there's people who find it easy, like it comes from somewhere within mm-hmm. a spirit, and there's other musicians who find it bloody hard to write a song or they find it hard to... But they keep on going, they keep striving. Yeah. But I, 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 I separate them and think there's natural, like a natural sort of something from within. Yeah. And there's a, someone who has to study it and try it and and, and figure out what yeah. sentences make a song and mm-hmm. sh- try and structure it in the perfect pop structure. Mm-hmm. Whereas I've never thought like that. I just think there's other types of musicians who... When they pick up a guitar, the chances are they're just going to write a song there and then whether it's a film they've watched, somewhere they've been, how they feel, mm-hmm. how the weather is outside. It, it's like, I'm like a recycling unit 
where whatever comes in here is going to pop out of here. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a sentence that I'm talking about or whether it's a song that I'm singing. Yeah. The two are the same. So, I mean, you could have a, have a talk about walking down the street and then we've seen this cat mm-hmm. and then the cat ran up, up, up a drain pipe. And then, for me, that's a song. Walking down the street. Yeah. Well, I've always... Uh, something that I've always thought is... Um, I don't know how true it is, but I feel like most people have an instrument. There's an instrument that will probably come to you naturally you just need mm. to find it yeah. so i feel like that's kind of in a similar vein yeah 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 yeah, yeah. like every everyone's got music in them mm-hmm. you know you just got to find the right outlet you've got to find for the some right people outlet. it's songwriting for some people it's keys for some people it's guitar yeah, yeah. for some people it's vocals i know mm. that's where i'm most comfortable i have to think so hard to mm. write a song or to play the guitar yeah but I don't have to think when I sing because I think that's my thing. That, that's yeah. your weapon. That's my weapon. That's, that's, my, that's my weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, as we talk about <laughs> Vikings, we've got Vikings weapons, voices and our weapons. Yeah. We've got Viking wood on the <laughs> But you know, it's it's but when you do sing though, that's an ins that's one hell of an instrument you've got. You know what I mean? You know, you don't do it like half arsed. You put you put you're in. No, but you're in, because I remember watching you and I went, she's in. <laughs> she 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 ain't put one toe in the water here. She's dived in here. She, do you know what I mean? You're not doing things by halves here. I just went bloody hell, and the passion. <laughs> You're not going to do it with passion. Forget about it. And that's how forget the, about forget it. Forget about it, man. Forget about it. But you, you went in there. You had the passion. You had the vocals. You know the sweat. I want to, you know, sometimes when you see someone, I'm not calling you sweaty, you know, like that. When all people are sweating on stage mm-hmm. and you can, you, you can you get lost and you can see them, they're playing one minute mm-hmm. and you'll see them get lost and they're not, they're not thinking about the audience then. They're yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. They're in this, this thing inside them and they're, I've been there. Yeah. And like one minute I'm like, oh, there's the audience there. Yeah. Mm. And then bang. I'm somewhere else, mm-hmm. and I'm in the music. I'm inside the music. I'm not in a room. I'm like in a, in, a, in the music, and that's when you start growling and oh yeah, and you can feel the beats and you can feel the, yeah. the rhythms and coming through your body. Mm-hmm. And it, it sounds mad, doesn't it? You make you looking at me. I know. Every, no, no, no. I know Everyone mean, who's but... not a musician is watching this, going, "What? Is are, all right, what too? are they on?" What is going on? Oh, yeah. I thought that shit was illegal in Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can get anything on Matthew Street. <laughs> Good vibes mainly. <laughs> Sometimes you just find it on the ground. <laughs> the amount of times that I hear, oh, yes, floor score. <laughs> <laughs> floor score. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. My God. Oh, better than Opscotch, isn't it? <laughs> um, so I guess the big question of the day. Who is Marco Seguro? Well, Marco Seguro is one of my mates. Um, or he was one of my mates. Um, but we had... Um, he used to do, like, charity, stuff for charity. You know, like, if there's any gig sounds, mm-hmm. bootle all the surrounding areas. Um, he gets dressed up as Spider-Man and he collect money for charities and stuff like that, but he was a proper scouser, proper scouser. Dead scouser. Yeah, but he'd walk around, and he'd, get, he'd get away with smoking Cuban cigars. You know, like, he just, he'd, he'd like, you no, know, like in a beer garden, everyone's vaping. Yeah. And he comes in with this big Cuban cigar and just goes, <sighs> all right, boys. And then he, he, he started wearing Cuban hats and flowery shirts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was talking to him one night. Well, we had an argument one night. And um, one in the same. We had, yeah, well, yeah, we had an argument, and it, I think I might have said things to him, and he said things to me, and um, we fell out, and we didn't speak for about two months. And it, when I tried to ring him, because I don't like leaving things, so I decided to ring him, and he was he was blanking me. He wasn't getting back, and every time he blanked me, the pain in my soul. You know, uh, do you know what I mean? Because I loved him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Loved him as a mate. He, he was a boss fella. Yeah. And I thought if I overstepped the mark when I was on like two bottles of whiskey, because we got we got bladdered like. So I don't know what I'd said really. And um, I got through to him. Right, finally got through. Mm-hmm. I said, "Are you mate? You all right?" And he went, "Not really, no." 
He said, what you said to me? And I said, oh, mate, I said, look, I, I blame it on the alcohol. So I said, what can I do to make it up to you? And he went, you can fucking write me a fucking song. And I said, what about it? He went, he said, about fucking me. <laughs> not not literally <laughs> about me. Right? Yeah. So I said, do you want me to write a song about you? And he went, yeah. So I said, all right, then. I said, um, what should we call it? And he went, and I could hear him sucking on something. He went, he's smoking a cigar. And I went, is that a Cuban? And he's like, he started laughing. I went, Marco. And then he went, Marco, Marco Cigaro. And I went, Marco Cigaro. And then I went, the Cuban style scout set. And we both burst out laughing over the phone, right? So one minute we haven't spoke for months. Next minute we're both like really crying on the phone, going yeah. out, talking about this, yeah. this song that hasn't been written yet. Mm-hmm. So he said, the Cubans, I went, Cuban style scout set. And I was like, undiluted, undisputed entertainer. And I started saying these things down the phone to him. And anyway, he was crying with laughter. He went, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. So then, like, I just picked up a guitar then. Got off the phone, so I picked up a guitar. wrote the song in about 20 minutes. And I rang him back and I went, what do you reckon about this? Do it in, like, some Cuban chords. Mm -hmm. We'll do it a bit, like, you know, South American. Mm -hmm. She was like that. Oh, I love it. Fucking love it. Oh my God, this is amazing. And I went, mate, I said, this is going to have you like, you know, you're going to be like cult status. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, it ends up, and I knew he had, he was battling with cancer for years. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't stop him going out, wouldn't stop him getting annihilated. He never, he'd always dance on the dance floor. This lust for life, going through this problem, but he had this lust for life. Anytime he'd walk into a room, everyone would smile. Yeah. Full of compliments, full of love, full of happiness. No, a real good vibe about him. So, anyway, he finally passed over, and it it, it was uh, it was sad, but I sort of knew it was coming. So I was in the hospital with him the day, couple of days before, and I knew it was coming. Um, yeah, but uh, I went to his funeral, and um, his coffin comes up outside the funeral. And Marco Cigaro starts playing on the uh, round the church, comes through the tannoy. But I burst out crying because I'm an emotional little fucker, really. So I, I started crying, right? Yeah. And everyone in the queue just turned around and went, You David Neville King? And I said, Yeah. And he went, You wrote this song for him, didn't you? And I was like, Yeah. And he went, Mate, love it. He said, You know how happy he was about this song? Mm-hmm. Before he passed over, he was going on about it every minute of every day. So if someone said to me and said, where's success, lion music? Mm-hmm. It's that. I'd say it was that. Yeah. And I'd say, not, not, not it's, it, it's when it means something to someone. Mm-hmm. Because originally it's going to mean something to me because I, I wrote the bloody thing. So when I write a song, I'm not writing it for no one else, you know what I mean? And I know people say this, and people go, oh, of course you do, of course you do. But I don't. I sit there, as I said before, picking up a guitar is my peace, my my place of peace Mm -hmm. for my brain. That's where it relaxes, that's where it it has a chance to thrive. Mm -hmm. I don't think too much about negativity at all. Yeah. You know, my brain's popping. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if someone said, what's success? It is when the successful bit is having peace in yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And feeling that sort of escapism. Yeah. But then when someone else comes up to you and goes, my God, that meant something to me. Or that made me smile. That's success. Mm-hmm. Because people might go, oh, the Lamborghini and the money and all this. I've never, ever dreamt of the Lamborghini and the money. Mm-mm. Never, ever thought about I never linked the two. I thought, if I'm going to get a Lamborghini and money, I'll get into business. Because the music side of things now, that's not where... I can't see the money in music anymore. No. So the, if you see musicians around, they're doing it because they, they fucking love it. Yeah. There's no, you know... Maybe there might be a couple of producers out there who might get a few bob mm-hmm. here and there. But if you're a songwriter, an actual performer, it's it, it's a funny thing, isn't it? It is a funny thing, mm-hmm. but to make people happy, I think that's where the um, the payment comes. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's also like connecting 
in a in a certain kind of special way that you can't do through many other mediums or any, any other, other mediums can't really do through any other way. Yeah. Because it's as we said before, it's like a it's like a magic it, it, you can't mm-hmm. see it, can you? It's it's the great beyond, man. Is it, it is. Yeah. It's, it's the kind of, it is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Do you know when I watch a film and it, it's sad and I can sit there and watch it, I haven't got a tear in my eye. As soon as a violin goes, <clears throat> hold on, I'm watching the same person here or the yeah. same thing on the telly. But what was it with that violin that just triggered it? Mm-hmm. Or a little bit of piano that goes ding, ding, ding. And next minute you're like, emotion just comes up through the notes of that instrument, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And before you know it, you're like, wow, that was almost like a magical a magical interaction there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the same to feel good. If I'm in a car and a banger comes on by Dua Lipa. Windows are down. The head's bopping. It's hard not to go over the speed limit when Gina yeah. Lipper comes on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. do you know what I mean? I know yeah. I'm just saying Gina Lipper, but, you know, yeah. anything. Well, it for might my, be a for rock my, song or something like that or anything. For my mom, it was always Christina Aguilera. That's when she'd get pulled over if Christina Aguilera was on there. 50, 60 mile an hour, 70 mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put Christina on, mom. It's a long journey. Want to get there in one piece? <laughs> Oh, oh god! Yeah. Oh yeah. But well, you know, it, <laughs> it's funny how it makes you to feel something, and mm-hmm. even like as the speed and thing, you know, like if you put your foot down or you go a bit quicker, or mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it it can change you. It can change mm-hmm. your day. Yeah. By a song can change your day. Oh yeah, it can. I used to say, um, uh, in in high school, I'd wake up and I'd listen to Green Day because they got my anger out for me. <laughs> yeah. It was like cathartic, and then I could have a great day. Yeah, so you could just sit there, listen to Green Day, that no anger, <laughs> no not, and then just go, ah, I've got all that out anyway. <laughs> now we can start the day. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. So I think with that, we ought to head off to our couch concert. He's the pops in the flip-flops, man with a plan The palm of his hand, he got a growl for a voice Happy persona, you'll find him in his deck chair Smoking Corona, surrounded by ladies Hosting the bingo, he got the charm He got the lingo, got them all flush like pink flamingo Start to single, oh, it's Michael Cigaro, the Cuban style scouser, undiluted, undisputed, entertainer, cosmic raver, oh, it's Michael Lele. Just pour it straight He's on a dance floor Shaking his booty you see him once You won't forget his face Oh, it's Marco Cigaro The Cuban style Scouser Undiluted Undisputed Entertainer Cosmic raver Oh, it's Marco
That was absolutely fantastic. All right, thank you. <laughs> Is there anything you want to plug before we get going? Um, yeah, just just the fact that I've got another I've got another seven tracks coming out. Oh yeah. Um, before the end of this year, as I, um, I, I'm going into the st- uh, Third Planet recording studio. Nice. Uh, with Andy, so we're gonna do some. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put a bit of money out and get some proper studio productions done because up to now. I've been working off Logic Pro. Yeah. In me in me loft. Now Same. Br- great minds think alike. And uh, I was on the Logic and um I'd, I'd produce produce as far as I can go. Yeah. So I love putting me tracks down. I love, you know, adding, you know, drums and violins. I love doing all that the pr- mm-hmm. process of creating it into a bigger thing. But then I have been sending them over to Andy a third planet recording just to master them. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always wanted to do, do the mastering and stuff, but for me, I'd rather keep it to a professional who knows what they're doing because he does that and I do this. And if the, if we can lock in the middle, mm-hmm. hopefully these next six songs are going to be more worthy of radio play, worthy of, mm-hmm. you know, people actually listening to them. Yeah. Um, and Because when the production is done properly... And like I've never had the, the, the re- I've never had them done to up to that standard before. Yeah. So I think now's the time. Although I've got songs out there and I've got songs on Spotify and all mm-hmm. that, but I think it's time now to go up that slight level mm-hmm. and pay someone to actually get a proper job done. Yeah. Where I'm on, like I've got like a sixty pound mic in ours, and to record, I think he's got a thousand pounds amp or something my like, um, microphone. So I want to try it just to. Give it the best possible chance mm-hmm. of sound, and yeah. you know, so me kids, me, me me little lad can listen to it and go, bloody hell, dad, that sounds like a song off the radio. Yeah, you know, yeah. I do an all right job, but I'm not a producer, and I think I've done it because I like to structure me songs before they go mm-hmm. over to the studio. Where's this time I'm going to send a demo, and then anything can happen in the studio. Mm-hmm. It can be like, let's re-record the guitars, let's redo the basses, let's put the new vocals on. Mm-hmm. And it's just like that'll be an exciting thing for me because I'm not used to that. Yeah. I'm used to my own little space and I can create mm-hmm. myself yeah. on my own. Where's this time? I've got a guy there saying, nope, do that. Mm-hmm. Nope, do this. And this time I'm getting older now. So I need to start listening to professionals. Because we all learn now, eventually because to up listen to, now, to the I've professionals. Been, I've, been, I've been stubborn. I have been stubborn mm-hmm. where, where I think, oh, I can do this. Or I can do that on my own. Mm-hmm. Whereas I got to a point now where I'm thinking, I've got 200 and odd songs. I need to start getting some more out there. Yeah. Because have you ever done that when you when you're uh, when you pick up your guitar and you go, I wrote this 20 years ago, and it sounds totally different 20 years ago. But when you pick up a guitar, it's the same song, but you'll do it in a different way, mm-hmm. and you'll sing it in a different way. Yeah. And before you know, it, you go, Oh my God. It's a cracker, it's a belter, mm-hmm. it's a belter of a track. Yeah. And you think, wow, that was 20 years ago. And it, I've just pulled it back out the the file. I mean, I've only been writing for maybe two or three years, and I do that now. And it's only been two or three years. Yeah, and so. you still look back on one and go, oh, yeah. I'll revamp that. Yeah. And when you sit down and you, you re, re-enter that, that song, mm-hmm. you get back into that song, yeah. 
all different elements coming because you're in a different stage. Mm -hmm. You're on a different stage, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So you, another element start coming in. And then if you re, if you do the song in another ten years, mm -hmm. it sound like Queen or something like that. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining oh, it's us. It's been today. a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. And thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, it's Michael Cigaro, the Cuban style scouser, undiluted, undisputed, entertainer, cosmic raver. I think so, some people are too reserved, aren't they? Some people yeah. can be very reserved in interviews, can't they? Oh, yeah. You've got to say the right thing. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know, cause a little trouble. You got to. Got to. Got to. That's where all the, the fun comes That's from. That's where all the fun is. Yeah.